Hello everyone. Um, great to see the passion in areas like planning, architecture, etc. I'm going to take it up a bit and be a little bit more macro to start with. Um, so, as was mentioned, I work, I'm Nick Ench. I'm a director in the Green Investment Group at Macquarie Capital. Um, before I dive into what we do, I just want to. This is our mission. We want. To, we are here to accelerate the global transition to a greener economy. To outline what that really means, I wanted to sort of point out the problem, if you like. So global, and this is the macro, so I'm, I'm going to spin everyone off. There's lots of charts. I like charts. I'm in finance. I'm an engineer as well. So global atmospheric CO2 concentrations are the highest they've ever been in 800,000 years. In, the, in that 800,000 year period, they've never exceeded 300 parts per million. Today, they're over 400 parts per million. CO2 emissions have drastically increased over time. So we've got a bunch of countries here, but the main message is that CO2, since 1900, our emissions have increased from around 2 billion tonnes a year to about 36 billion every year, based on um, in just over 100 years. It's very extreme. Australia likes to say we're small, etc. However, on another metric, we are one of the highest producers of CO2 in the world per capita. To put it in context, in about two days, you use as much CO2 on average as a person in Nigeria uses in a whole year. So then we turn to the sort of energy theme, if you like, and the one we, a lot of people focus on is electricity, I guess. So around half our global emissions were the result of electricity. But that does, then we've got transport, we've got manufacturing and industry, and we've got the sort of residential and construction spaces as well and some other smaller sectors. Globally, we consume about 160,000 terawatt hours of, of energy. What's that? I don't know, it's a lot, right? So, um, and I don't, we don't think that's necessarily going to come down, and part of that is around having a better life for everyone. It's the same theme as water. Um, but in, in 2018, recently, we're about 11% of the energy we consume was renewables. So there's 90 odd percent that's not. So when you get to electricity, about 23% of what we consume is renewables. So it's about 80% is still fossil fuels. And that leads to the task that we see at, at GIG as our core mission statement, and that's to accelerate that transition away from carbon, fossil fuels, to renewable energy. What are we? We're, we're, we're a fairly small group globally. There's about 350 of us um, that band together and work across a, the, the sort of renewable spectrum, and I'll talk a little bit about what that is. But to date, we've invested about two, in about 20 billion uh, pounds worth of, of projects, which is eight gigawatts of renewable energy. Um, that's 460 terawatt hours of energy that is renewable. And we've therefore created about 174 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent in, in terms of reduction. If, if you like, there's a small bit of history, I won't go into it too long. GIB, which is originally the Green Investment Bank in the UK, it was set up by the UK government uh, uh, about a decade, right, just under a decade ago after the global financial crisis. So the UK and the EU have great policy settings, unlike some other countries. So for renewable projects, with a lot of, they, so they had great projects, great policy settings, but the failure in the debt and equity capital markets, so they needed money. So the UK government basically said, well, here's three billion pounds to act as cornerstone investments for these projects. And by the way, oh, we need people that know what they're doing and wind farms and things like that. So they got a bunch of people. After about five years, they deployed all that capital and there was a lot of private sector investment available for good projects. So they decided, well, taxpayers don't need to put that money in any longer, we'll sell it. So they ran a process, we bid into the process, and we were successful in acquiring the Green Investment Bank. We can't call it that, so it's the, now it's Mac Macquarie's Green Investment Group. And we've been working collaboratively with them. I've, I've worked collaboratively with them on one particular project, which I'll show you as a case study, uh, since 2017, and now we are we're sort of jointly branded here as well. 
So the benefit to us, I'm a general infrastructure guy, I've done hospitals, I've done rail, I've done roads, I've done schools, uh, I know about how to package infrastructure, but they bring a lot of technology expertise in a range of sectors. So what do we do? We, most people think of Macquarie as the people that bring the money. We also bring technical skills. So we participate in the life cycle of a project. We, um, start very, we can start very early in a project. Where's the, what are we going to do? Where's the site? Acquire a site. Go and get the environmental approving approval process. If we're very familiar with New South Wales approval processes, it's complex, it's hard. I agree with all that. We then get to the commercialisation, we package up all the bits, the contracts, the contract doors, etc., and we finance it. We'll own and invest in that asset. We'll typically take it through construction into operations. And we've de-risked it. We'll tend to sell at that point to things like superannuation funds that like long-term contracted revenue streams for yield. So that's what we do, but we largely focus in the renewable space. What sectors are we in? We're in offshore wind. We're one of the early developers in, of offshore wind projects. We were one of the first in the UK. We've now uh, developed the first offshore wind farm in Taiwan. It's under construction at the moment. And we were the full developer. There's 50-odd Macquarie people managing the interface of the construction, etc., on that project at the moment. We do waste, waste and bioenergy. So there's a range of... There's Combined heat and power projects in MGTT side, which is a biomass project, Quinana Waste to Energy project in Perth. There's onshore wind, but there's, there's distributed energy, so we do larger scale distributed energy, sort of street lighting. We're looking at batteries, hydro, hydrogen, etc. So, getting to the case study bit in the last couple of minutes, I've got, I'll bring this back more locally to a couple of projects we've done in Australia. We've, we've done a number. So one's a wind farm and this one's a waste to energy project in Kwinana. So what's relevant to this? Um, uh, this project, uh, uh, we came in as co-developer about two years before financial close. The developer, Phoenix Energy, got into some financial trouble. It had been underdeveloped for, for a long time. A number of sponsors had come and gone. We ca I came in with Macquarie for the last two years of the development. And we, we managed to pull it together, select a contractor, a technology provider. We work collaboratively with eight and hopefully what will be 11 of, of councils that are surround the project to provide long-term long residual red bin waste to the project. Um, and we got it to financial close, including uh, a, a grant from ARENA and a, and a loan from CFC. What's the impact to the environment? So when, when ARENA do this analysis, they do a life cycle assessment, and part of that life cycle assessment is the net carbon footprint of the project. So um, the, the carbon footprint for this project is about minus 400,000 CO2 equivalent tonnes a year, and that's really based on you send patriciable waste, which is the, your red bin waste, to landfill, it creates methane, and methane's about 25 times worse than CO2 per unit that's produced. The other thing is it, it produces 40 megawatts of power. That's offset against, depending on how you calculate it, either coal-fired or a sort of a weighted average generation at a point in time. So those two are the main things that drive the minus 400,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent a year. The other type, another project that we've been involved in developing and, and financing and owning uh, in Australia is the Murrawarra Wind Farm. So this is at the time, one of the largest wind farms in Australia. It's in Victoria. Um, so we, we like to take on large, complex projects. The, f the first one, Quinana, was the first of its type in Australia. So that was hard and complicated and fun. This is the, the largest corporate PPA. So this is a sign of the times, despite policy or lack of, et cetera, Corporates and, and pension funds that own and put money into listed corporates have all moved to, to make carbon and sustainability a key factor for them. And that's evidenced by Telstra and Z, et cetera, and Coca-Cola Amatol and the University of Mel Melbourne collaborating to come up with the largest power purchase agreement for zero carbon uh, wind-generated wind electricity. Uh, and we were successful in winning that, and that was the cornerstone for developing an, uh, that wind farm. So apart from it being big and people in wind love talking about the latest turbines and stuff, it's really about 
I think the movement of capital and corporate responsibility to renewable energy, which is really the driver of decarbonising and what's the driver of, um, of the temperature concerns, the underlying drivers really amount, the amount of carbon in the, in, in the environment. So that, that in the brief time I had was just an overview of the type of work we're trying to do. Our group, we sort of see ourselves as, it's interesting, I, I work for Macquarie, most people don't think about us having much of a mission other than maybe making money, but I think for me, this is an area of great passion for me. It's been um, being involved in these transformational projects in which we can hopefully make a real difference to the speed in which we transition out of the world of carbon and fossil fuel. Um, the e easier game in a way is electricity and power. The next evolution is things like transport um, and that sort of thing. So and we hope to be, or I hope to be around and playing in that for a while. So thank you.